Good day, everyone. My name is James Crane. And my name is Stephen Gilbert. And this is our presentation on corporate fraud and business ethics in the business environment. Corporate fraud is a type of criminal activity that involves using deception for personal gain, usually in the form of financial gain. Corporate fraud is classified as a white-collar crime, meaning that it involves an illegal act or series of acts committed by an individual or business entity using some nonviolent means to obtain a personal or business advantage. Some common forms of corporate fraud include embezzlement, where a person who is entrusted with another person's property fraudulently appropriates it, theft, money laundering, where one engages in financial tra transactions to conceal the identity, source, or destination of illegally gained funds, and last but not least, conspiracy. Corporate fraud is an important subject because it breaches the foundation of business, which is business ethics. It undermines a system that promotes fair, accurate, and trustworthy trading of information between corporations and investors. Not only is corporate fraud costly to society, but the financial losses also significantly damage the economy. And in addition, consumer and investor trust is broken when, co when corporations cook the books. Questions to consider. What are the most common or costly forms of fraud in the corporate sector? What laws have been implemented to mitigate corporate fraud and internet fraud? What is the impact of fraud on society? These are just a few questions that we will be answering in our presentation. Corporate fraud contains many of the subject matter discussed in Chapter 4 of the textbook, The Legal Environment of Business. Chapter 4 discusses business ethics in detail and various ways business ethics is breached in the business environment. A few key ideas found in the chapter that pertains to corporate fraud include long-run profit maximization, corporate social responsibility, and the attitude of top management. Long-run profit maximization basically means that corporate executives and employees have to distinguish between short-run and long-run profit. In the short-run, they can increase profits by continually selling a defective product but the long-run effects involve lawsuits, large settlements, and bad publicity, keeping management from participating in such activities. Corporate social responsibility encompasses the idea that corporations have a commitment to making ethical decisions, improving society, and minimizing environmental impact for the betterment of society. This idea is breached in the case of corporate fraud. Lastly, the attitude of top management creates and maintains an ethical workplace and demonstrates to employees ethical decision making. A manager who does not do so cannot create a positive environment for ethics. One example of a big fraud that has happened in the last two decades is the Enron scandal. Enron was a major supplier of energy and other commodities. Shareholders lost $74 billion in this scandal in which thousands of employees and investors lost their retirement accounts and many lost their jobs as well. The main players in this Enron scandal was CEO Jeff Skilling and the former CEO Ken Lay who both faced criminal charges for their actions. In addition to the Enron scandal, there was the WorldCom scandal in 2002. WorldCom was a telecommunications company which made billions of dollars each year. In trying to cover up their scandal, they inflated assets by as much as $11 billion, leading to 30,000 lost jobs and $180 billion in losses for investors. The main player in this scandal was CEO Bernie Ebers. The Sarbanes-Oxley Act of 2002 was enacted right after the WorldCom scandal. The act was implemented to ensure that corporations could no longer breach investor trust by committing fraud. The act created the Public Accounting Oversight Board, which reviews and sets standards for the auditing of corporations and the measures that corporations must take to solidify their financial statements as true and accurate. The act governs the way 
that accounting firms can audit corporations and the guidelines they must meet to ensure they are completely independent and have no conflict of, of interest in auditing. This is explained in further detail under Title III, where auditor independence is explicitly laid out. In addition, the Act demonstrates guidelines for what responsibilities corporations have to their investors and consumers. This is complemented by the further disclosures forced by the Act. Since the Sarbanes-Oxley Act, top management must sign off on financial statements made public by the corp corporation, causing management to be personally liable for any faults. The internet has grown astronomically during the past 20 years. <clears throat> because millions of people access the World Wide Web every day, the internet has become a major target to companies and individuals that engage in fraudulent activities. Cyber fraud is a crime that is conducted on the internet. Many types of cyber fraud exist, such as online auction and retail fraud, where an individual or company attempts to scam an individual by selling a fake product by promising the buyer an item for a payment but never sending the item. And online piracy where people eagerly, <sighs> illegally download music, movies, and software for free, thus robbing hardworking people of the money they deserve for their product. Other common forms of cyber fraud occur with online investing such as fake online investment newsletters that promise huge returns on worthless stocks and pump and dump schemes where a scammer will encourage investors to buy worthless stocks thus pumping up the fake stock. The scammer then sells their shares at a higher rate, thus leading investors to lose their money. Not only do adults use stock fraud online, but teenagers have been caught doing it as well. Jonathan Lebed, a 15-year-old from New Jersey, used a pump and dump scheme to scam hundreds of investors online out of $285,000. By researching Wall Street, Jonathan was able to teach himself how to use a scheme to scam investors. He was eventually caught and became the first minor to be sued by the SEC for fraud. Lebed was charged with 11 different counts of civil fraud charges and was ordered to pay back the money he stole. As stated before, piracy is a major form of cyber fraud. The FBI estimates that artists, developers, and movie producers lose an estimated $12.5 billion each year because of piracy fraud. The government does not take piracy lightly and major consequences have been dealt on piraters in the past. In 2012, a Minnesota woman was ordered to pay $222,000 by federal court for illegally downloading 24 songs. That is over $9,250 a song. The Minnesota woman tried to appeal the case but lost in court and was ordered to pay the fine. According to the IRS, 88 in investigations were initiations in 2014 due to fraud. This is 28 more investigations than the 60 done in 2013, thus re reiterating the fra that fraud is still an ongoing problem. Out of the 88 investigations performed, 79 separate individuals were sentenced because of fraud. Greg Perloni, a CFO of his own com company in Connecticut, was one of the individuals that were sentenced in 2014. Poloni was charged for embezzling $5.7 million and evading income taxes. He was sentenced to 72 months in prison and was ordered to pay $7.2 million in restitution. Because of Poloni's actions, the IRS lost an estimated $1.4 million. In a scholarly article written by Jessica M. Erickson titled, Over Litigating Corporate Fraud, an Empirical Examination, we found that results of the study to be important in understanding corporate fraud litigation. Erickson analyzed 700 lawsuits pertaining to corporate law and found that out of the 700 lawsuits, there was a median of four various types of fraud-related issues at the core of the lawsuit. Most lawsuits were deemed as parallel litigation, meaning that different courts were hearing the same claims, which all revolved around various corporate fraud crimes. We found the redundancy in the case to be adequate based on the nature of cor corporate law cases, which predominantly show fraudulence. After reviewing countless scholarly articles, researching famous corporation fraud incidents, and diving deeper into the realm of internet fraud, it is pretty clear that fraud is still a proceeding issue in today today's society. Both Stephen and I agree with Jessica Erickson in that corporate fraud is a prevalent part of corporate litigation. We believe that the FBI is going to continue to crack down on fraud, leading to more court cases and more sentencings. 
With billions of dollars being lost due to internet fraud every year, it is clear that cyber fraud is still a major contributor to the financial losses of investors over the years. Along with that, major fraud scandals such as Enron and WorldCom have burned the legal system and investigators. These scandals costed countless innocent people's jobs and took billions of dollars from innocent investors. However, the SEC is making big steps to reduce fraudulent activities by passing laws such as the Sarbanes-Oxley Act passed in 2002 that have mitigated the likelihood of corporation fraud. Hopefully, citizens such as you and me can protect ourselves from fraud by doing research before investing and making smarter decisions. We both believe that if the SEC and CIA continue to crack down on fraud, that businesses will be less likely to commit it from fear of the consequences.